Hello and welcome to They Were Heroes, episode one. How's everybody doing? All right. Yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, we finally got it. After plenty of planning, we made it to our first episode one, and not another zero. So, before we rush into things and get things done, how have your guys' months and weeks been? <laughs> Anything it, anything interesting happened with him? Uh, jury duty? <laughs> yes, that is something. Just your standard work and whatnot? Mm. School. So, to try to liven things up, why don't we go ahead and head down the row again to introduce player with character. So, once we start going through things, we can get everything all honky-dory. So, starting mm -hmm. with you, Nobu. Uh, my name's Alan. I'm going to be playing Nobu Ohali. He's a Mudwallen born and raised uh, in a uh, Tobu camp near Fort Go. Um, he's he always likes to strike a good deal whether it sounds good or bad to other people and um, recently he struck a deal with a demon who may or may not be out for blood. Yeah we get to see how well that's gonna end up for him. How about we go with you next Sienna. Hi, I'm Philip. I'm the player of Sienna. Uh, she is a seraphim, which is a fancy term for. Well, she's a seraphim, but just think of female angel, essentially. Um, she's has an accent, <laughs> uh, quite skittish, a little bit. Um, although she seems to have good enough conscience that she won't run off and leave others to do all the work for her. Um, she's a bit of a book bookworm, likes to read a lot. And she also has pretty ugly, to say the least, uh, looking uh, wings on her back. They're black and mostly molted, so... Something that I'll probably a lot of people will point out once they see her. But yeah. Alrighty. Then how about next? Rust. Hey, I'm Lila. I'm perpetually tired. I'm playing a um, character called called Rust. She's a... a will be a... Um, Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, she's super wrapped up. Um, got a big sword, a big shield, and a big gun that doesn't actually hurt things, unfortunately. And I am going to attempt to be Welsh and fail. So, you know, how's that? Next. All right, and finally, Echo. Hi, name's Tommy. Uh. Uh, work uh, every day, every day. Um, playing games with some friends. I'm playing Echo. Uh, he's a follower of the One. Uh, you would think of as God in Christianity. Um, even though he uh, he believes his religion is correct and he thinks it's the best, he won't force it down anybody's throat, which is really important. Um, uh, he's a cleric, uh, and he's, uh, doing his, uh, not voyage, uh, every once in a while he has to go around the world and check it out. Alright, and I'm not X Gamer, who's going to be your humble DM for this interesting party. So... 
today, if you've seen all the episodes coming up to this, you would have met both Nobu and Sienna and also Rust and Echo. Today, this is going to be approximately one and a half months from those times where you saw them in their group campaigns. Our scene opens up as it normally does here in our games here. The camera piercing the sky, flying down into the barren wasteland that is the desert sea. Moving past multiple, multiple heel hills of arid wasteland. It goes past a inland of water and then once again finds itself in the desert. We find currently moving slow but with purpose two individuals one of which completely wrapped and covered a large cannon-like shield plastered on their back as they make step after step over the sand dunes the other a rather spangly yet religious looking figure his hat uses uh, his hat used to block out the desert winds and look further beyond the dunes to see nothing but more sand on top of sand as why don't you go ahead and describe yourself echo uh how i look like yes in the okay. scene uh, as he said, you know, uh, the sand is just uh, blowing past real hard. Uh, looking at Echo, he's got heavy armor on. Um, it is, uh, it does have the symbol of the one on it. Uh, he has a shield strapped to his back, also with a symbol of the one on it. Uh, a backpack and a pouch on his side. Um, the only distinguishable thing on him is his uh, gold earrings. And then turning around, you look back to see your companion, which, Rust, go ahead and describe yourself as you're moving through the desert of the Lost Desert. All right. Um, Rust is covered head, no, it was just wrapped head to toe. Um, a classic uh, duster jacket and a wide, wide usual ten gallon hat, combined with a, um, combined with both a domino mask and a um, bandana wrapped around her mouth to cover her completely. Um, the only really, the only part of her you can actually see is the a pair of. Uh, green eyes that in some light, levels of light it seems as if they're actually glowing and um, unlike many in the in the desert uh, she carries a sword at her hip which sees many a use and as the scene opens up it moves into both Rust and Echo as Echo looks back to Rust who seems to be working her way up the current sand dune. You've been traveling for a couple of weeks now after departing from Fort Port, heading towards Mirage, the location of at least one of the first of many stops for Rust, and one of the many stops for you, Echo, and your pilgrimage. But the scene opens up with you turning back to her currently moving up on the sand dune and you making it up there first and seeing no sign of life anywhere in the lost desert. What do you see up there? Sand. More sand, a rock, another rock, more sand. Not much. But isn't it supposed to be around here? I 
I mean, I mean. Ah, it's the one with the map. What map? Okay, that's... <laughs> that explains a lot. Man, the guy said three days... It's been longer than that. Yeah, it's been four. <clears throat> oh, the sand's so harsh. Mmm. Well, it is called Mirage. I guess we can just uh, keep on looking, and if we don't see it, we'll eventually get to Fort Skull. I mean, that is an option, but I just want to point out that both a place called Mirage and Fort Skull it's kind of uh, unfortunate tidings, don't I think? Yes, but we're low on supplies. We need to get somewhere quick. Yeah, low on supplies. Well, there's another hill just over the way there. Maybe it'll get us a better view. Well, let's check it out. And as the two of you continue to move forward, another part in the Lost Desert. We come up on the scene. Sand amongst sand. Going over the camera until splatters of red come into view. And then more splatters. Until it leads up to a corpse in the sand. And then going up it, we watch as this large, almost pristine looking greatsword with a wood finish comes out the back of the undead creature. As Nobu, you stand there in a puff after slaying your third sand drag in the encounter prior moments before this. As you turn back and see Sienna currently pushing off the few that fell on her after bashing it with her weapon on the head. Oh jeez! Oh my! Okay! Okay! Gosh! Oh! Okay! Hi! You alright there? They fell on me! Why did they fell on me? Why would they fall on me? Jesus! What are you, some sort of coward? I'm not a... I am just cautious. I don't know what these things have... where these things have been. I do not know what is now on me. <sighs> Sand? Yes, I know. I know. Um... Are, are, are you doing okay? Yeah, yeah, of course I'm doing fine, but for some reason, sword hand still itches. Yes, that's sad. Uh, I hope we get um, that uh, fixed at some point, hopefully. What are you talking about? What needs to be fixed? Ah, uh, hmm. Yes, sir, sir, yes, yes. You 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 made a deal, which is fine. You've made a deal with another being that uh, is now giving you powers. Yes, yes, that is this is all very wonderful and good. Yes. Um so well uh Where are we? I thought you was the one who knew. I mean we are obviously in the lost desert, but I mean hmm. Uh Nobu's just going to scratch the back of his head and he's going to look around and he's going to say this wasn't a good deal at all oh my gosh you and your fucking deals all right let's uh let's see if we, we could just find uh there's a, there's a place around here somewhere i'm sure somewhere with people you want to use those wings <laughs> just glares at you what? I'm just saying. Anyway, we can uh, we can find the place. Um, let let let, let me see if uh, let me see if I can just uh, think for a second and discern if I know where exactly we are, depending on where we left off. Okay, let's see, let's see. Can I do a history check? <laughs> you may. Oops, that was accidentally to you. I rolled a 16, everyone. Well, rolled a 10 plus 6. So, 
gathering the information that you were told before you left Tortuga, you knew that you had to head to Mirage to meet up with an individual that kind of was akin to what you were looking for in terms of, well, figuring out something to help make you feel like you've done something more than skirt on the coattails of another man. And for you, Nobu, Mirage is dangerously close to Fort Skull, which... You think back? You have business there. I think... As much fun as it would be to head straight to Mirage, I think... I have some business, unattended business, to see to at Fort School. Mind taking a detour over there? I mean, if we must. If it's... I don't know how... Uh, how much out of the way is uh, Fort Skull from Mirage? Well, each hex on the map is a day. Oh, Jesus. And where are we, you know... Able to discern? <laughs> Relatively uh, speaking? You assume you're somewhere within this ping. That is quite a few days away. I mean, we can at least just stop by at Mirage just to rest up and then we can go to Fort Skull, huh? Alright, alright. I hear you. Alright, okay. Uh, you still have a couple of days left before we get to the town, but at least uh, we are almost there. Hopefully. Probably. As long as we don't run into more skeletons. <laughs> Gotta be optimistic. Yes, yes. Optimistic, yes. <sighs> well, I was... we'll, we'll, we'll both go, yes. We both need, yes. Yeah. As she will start walking in the direction of Mirage. <laughs> After some time walking through the sand dunes, eventually you come across what looks like a scar in the earth that created a natural, um, incline and decline. That seems to be a protection from the sands, at least, especially with the sun going down. Wanna take a, wanna take some, wanna catch some Z's here? Or would you want, rather, Check forward. Ah, uh, perhaps catching a little bit of shade would not be so much a trouble. Uh, my, uh, do not have as big wings as some of my sisters. Not easy to shade. And even this hat, as she points to her Indiana Jones hat, it's not enough. Let's just head over and... Yeah, Nobu's gonna follow. Alright, so, as the two of you make your approach, you start to see the hindsight tale of what looks like campfire flickering in the distance in that area. Oh, seems that there's someone over there. Perhaps we should negotiate with them? Try to see if they let us hang around. Yes, hopefully. They will let us. Um, don't... Try not to... Take out the weapon. I'll keep it behind my back. Mm-hmm. All right. She would make her way over to the campfire. Campfire. <clears throat> Meanwhile, Rasuneko, you found this rather convenient crevasse in the earth, the place that you originally thought was another dune, actually just being an escape from the elements, as you take this chance to use this as you've been traveling for a while, and might as well use this place to escape the elements for the night, as you already hit, went ahead and struck up a campfire. Wow. Wow, 
we haven't reached the uh, town itself, village itself, whatever it is. At least there's this. Yeah, this was a nice little find we uh, got here. It's a shame we couldn't find uh, Mirage. I guess we actually need a map next time. Uh, what are your two passives? What? What are your two passives? Uh, probably ten. Perception? Uh, Twelve. Passive um, investigation is yeah. fifteen. Passive perception is eleven. Alright, so you two both notice about 20 or so minutes after camping up the sight of two individuals coming in from the sands in your direction. Seem to be uh, approaching quickly, or...? Depends on you guys. How quickly are you guys moving into the crevasse? Uh, Nobu is being cautious. He's making sure that, you know, uh, I'm the only person behind, uh, Sienna. Yeah, Sienna's making her way casually, trying to keep her dress from, in any way, dragging in the sand. As she would just make her way over, briskly, but casually. Uh, I had, uh... I'd shake Russ's shoulder, pointing out there's some people coming. Noticed? Uh, I don't uh, pick up my weapons. I uh, stand up and uh, sort of shout, who goes there? And Rust is going to look in the other way of the crevasse, the cre fucking words, shit. Um, <laughs> crevasse's other way? You don't like the other end. That's it. See, there's this is just the first half of an ambush. <laughs> Go ahead and make a perception. Oh boy, it's going to be low. First roll of the game. Don't mess up. Oh, oh well, technically, up I rolled. Here comes yeah, but we don't care. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one actually cared. It's not bad. So, as you look down the other end of the crevasse. You don't see any movement from what you think a incoming ambush would be, and you look at the tops of the walls and basically keep an open eye just in case, which is very apparent to both Noobu and Sienna, this other individual, like keeping an eye out, while the first seemingly stands up and is not so much greeting, but trying to discern your intentions. Seems stops in a shucks and ways. Um, hello! Uh, we are just, uh, boat travelers going through the uh, lost desert. Uh, we would like to, uh, take shelter here for a little bit. Um, would you two mind if, uh, we accompanied you, uh, in your shelter usage? I, uh, I gesture rust, um, maybe, uh, I mean, I can't really just let these people just stay out here like this. Uh, but we should be careful of them. I let them in. I'll keep an eye on them. Okay, come in, come in. It's windy out there. Come in. Well, ah. don't mind if I do. That's okay, okay. She would make her way over cautiously as she would roll an insight check on Ziman. And the... Patted individual. <laughs> and yeah, I'll change my thing. So, looking at them, they seem to be as cautious as the two of you are. You don't see, sense any immediate hostile intentions, at least. Alright, she will cautiously make her way over. GM, I have a question. I have an answer. Is, uh, Nobu's fucked up, um, visible? He just, just looks like a leather glove. Okay, never mind then. I, 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 I didn't I finish the video, so... Mm -hmm. Hello, so, um, uh, my name is, uh, Sienna Goodshoes. 
I put out my hand uh, towards uh, both of you, seeing as you're together, uh, to shake. My name is Echo. Uh, she would make her way over and shake your hand. Nobu's uh, he's going to shake you with his, with his good hand. He's going to give a uh, firm grip. Yes, Echo also has a nice firm grasp. Uh, grabs your other hand with his hand. I'm sorry you had to deal with the uh, wind out there. It is definitely a problem. Name's Nobu. It's pleased to meet your, make your acquaintance. And no, it wasn't that bad. She's um, Sienna right here. She's a delicate type. Me I, uh... and my friend here were looking for Mirage, but <clears throat> as the name implies, it's just too hard to find. Oh, you're not that ways off. Just a couple more days. Do you actually have a map? Uh, she kind of taps her head. Sort of. <laughs> well, we left the last town. They said go that way. And this is where we're at. Hmm. The flicker of the fire seems to give more of a vision of these two. And Echo, you notice the large, molted, yet very apparent black wings... Hanging on Sienna's back. Our um, out of character is the race normally black? No. They're white, feathered, angelic looking visages that are relics of the old religions and gods, but still respected as holy and deific. As the uh, fire flickers, and I notice this. I immediately pull out my uh, cross necklace and point out to him what, what to her what what are what? those? What the what is what? <laughs> she <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh what uh, she turns around oh oh um don't don't mind these these are just she kinda just kinda flicks them out a little bit. They're barely really like like they're 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 barely even her arm length, like arm span. These are just uh, they're just my wings. They they they've always been like that. Uh, what happened to you? Uh, nothing. I've just I was just born. Like uh, uh, these um, I've had them for as long as I can remember. But I feel as though the seraphim aren't normally have white wings, correct? Yes, they're my sisters. They have these nice, beautiful white wings and brown, and they get to fly everywhere. But I am stuck here on the ground with the black wings, and it's something that I have lived with for quite a long time, and I get really constrained. Um, if they're such a bother, Father, if you can earn some coin, I'm sure some surgeon will be able to remove them. No, no, no. <laughs> you said as long as yeah, you you long time. Slow. Slowly look over at Ross. Or just a long time. Because I point out uh, my the one stuff, you know, obviously the cross and the on my armor. I'm sure if we get to the next town, we might be able to help you with that. They're fine. I can. They're they're fine. Don't worry about it. They're they're completely healthy. I've lived with them my entire life. There's always. There's always my option. After a couple seconds, uh, Echo calms down. Everyone has their own reasons, I suppose. Uh, he's still going to be pretty wary of this individual with the demonic-looking wings and uh, offer a seat by the fire. Thank you. She would look over to Rust. So, uh, well, who are you? The name's Rust. Rust. She, she just stays there, arms crossed, doesn't put her hand out. But gives a nod to Sienna and Nobu. I see. Also, to the viewers at home, please get used to the bird noise in the back. They aren't mine. Oh. That's just Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I've had to get used to it too. Um, so... Uh, 
What are you two doing out here? Um, what are you? What is your uh, business in uh, Mirage? Uh, I am on a pilgrimage for the one, uh, visiting all the churches uh, within my reach. Uh, and there is one there. As I uh, taking freedoms here, I pick up a rat or whatever we were cooking uh, from the fire and take a bite out of it. Uh, oh, as for me, I don't have such a. Uh... Even I can't even pronounce the word evangelistic uh, approach. I'm just after a bounty. I see. If a person's got to make money, a person's got to make money. Oh my! My manners. Uh, I uh, go to hand the rat to Nobu if he would like it. Nobu, Nobu's gonna grab it with his leathery hand, and he's going to. He's going to unapologetically just start tearing into it. Almost as if he's never had a It's a pretty good sized rat. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a pretty medium rat. Just pass it around, pass it around. I've I've had my fill. Um is there uh, anything else on the menu? Well, that's just what I've prepared, um, and what I had here. But uh as you've seen going through the desert, there isn't many options. Fair enough. We've got some scorpion jerky if you would want to partake of that. How was that? Rust. What? When was I going to know about this? You had some. Yeah, a couple days ago. Just because thou can't ration yourself. <laughs> uh, she would look between the two. Um, I suppose I would not mind a little bit of uh, scorpion jerky. Rust offers the vomit uh, piece of scorpion jerky. I shall mark one off my inventory. She takes some gingerly and nibbles on it, looking at the two of the new individuals she has come into contact with. Hmm. Yeah, I was muted. Taking a bite, it has a tender, sweet taste to it, though after chewing on it and swallowing it, it gives off a overwhelmingly powerful like sour burst that fades away after a small bit of time but it starts off pleasant becomes a little bit unpleasant and then just comes kind of neutral at the end the jerky is pretty decent it's definitely better than this rat i've been eating i uh, think it's certainly a uh, journey on the test buds so, what are you two doing out uh, here by Mirage? Well, uh, we're just simply traveling, trying to make some sort of headway in uh, our goals. Uh, Mr. Nobu, you had some business that you need to take care of. That's correct. Oh, are you a merchant or something? That I am. Uh... Let's just say I deal with um, ores and metals. Oh, okay. Pretty nice. Uh, maybe they'll have something for you there. But uh, I'm not uh, an expert, but I don't think that I'll find many ores in a desert. Especially this one. Well, if he has them and wants to sell them, maybe they'll want it. I got a supply back at home. There you go. Ah, looking to extend uh, tread routes between thyself and Mirage. Even though it's quite a quite a ways from home, it's better than nothing, right? Everyone needs an income. Uh, but it is getting late. 
um, takes a swig of my water skin. Um, I must do my uh, prayer and then I need to go to bed. Uh, Echo would uh, uh, quietly get up, uh, move away a little bit, and then uh, get down on his knees and start praying with his uh, necklace out. Rust finds a uh, uh, just nods to to their two new companions, and then finds a more comfortable than the others. Rock sits down and seems to just apparently nod off. Hmm. But she's not actually asleep. Uh, Nobu's Nobu's just going to. Uh, Keep an eye out, looking up at the to the top of the ravine, um, and then after a while, after making sure that nothing really stumbles up on this little sanctuary, then Nobu's just going to quietly uh, doze off a little bit far away from everybody else. Though Sienna would uh, start taking her sleeping. Uh, roll, you know, straighten it out, looking over it, just like, okay, still sand everywhere, but it's, you don't have to do. Uh, looks over at Nobu. Um, Nobu, are you not going to stay right here, closer to the fire? No, no I'm, I'm fine. I think I can stay warm by myself. You're awfully close to the cliff. I'm right next to the tree as well. But you could toss and turn and fall off. Not the type of person. It's a wall, not a cliff. Uh, where he is right now? Yeah, right here. That's a you wall? guys are in a um, crevasse. Yeah, it's 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 like a little cleavage in the in the land. <laughs> I see. Uh, so the two sides are going up. Ah, uh, that's. Yeah. God, that's yes. weird. Yeah, uh, Nobu's Nobu's nestled like in between the tree or whatever this, this stump is, and uh, the wall. Okay. Yeah. And I tracked like, everything I said. What if a boulder comes down and crushes you? I think a boulder will not be enough, but I appreciate the I appreciate the kindness. All right. She kind of just makes her way over here and straightens out her sleeping bag. All right, well, uh, if you need any help, uh, I shall be here, I suppose. She just goes and rests her head on the sleeping bag and takes a couple glances at Nobu, making sure he's okay. <laughs> it's around this time, the sounds of distant cawing seems to go off in the sky giving off that very ambient feel of what the desert always seems to give every night hmm. uh, Echo would finish his uh, prayer and uh, walk past the new two new companions uh, would you two like to go together in the morning well, I see. I suppose since we are all going to this mirage place, uh, yes, uh, it should be okay. The more, the better, right? Yes, strength in numbers, I suppose. Uh, previous to them showing up, uh, me, myself, and Rust would have uh, checked out this side of the crevasse and seen that it's a. Uh, a lot harder to get to, it seems like. And uh, position myself in a good spot to go to sleep. So, the only one staying up is Russ, correct? By technicality, due to the nature of trance. Ah, so you're doing trance right now. 
Okay. And Nobu, you're sleeping without sleeping bag? He's sleeping without a sleeping bag. Also a very valid choice. Who's taking off their armor that have armor? Uh, I am. Can I go for a second? Because I'm pretty sure, does she actually have leather armor? Yeah, she does. She would wear it. She'd be wearing it, but she would take off her leather armor and put it down. Uh, yeah, Nobu would have done that before, uh, nodding off. Not me, since I haven't actually stopped her to sleep. Alright, so... You guys begin to head to bed and fall into as peaceful as a sleep as you can. The torrents of the wind being ever present and ever vigilant at the night, especially in the lost desert. Rust. Boy. I need you to make a perception with disadvantage. I don't see shit. So, everything seems to be going fine and calm, and your trance seems to be going down pretty well. As about an hour in, Echo. Yes. You seem to be awoken with an excruciating pain around your eyes. Mm, what's going on? Ugh. Rest, you awake? Knowing that rest is normally awake. <laughs> so yeah, I'm Do pretty I sure like 23 it? hits you. Oh, advantage, eh? Uh, yeah. As you get pecked in the eye for eight damage. That is, uh, not feel good. As all of you are just awoken by the sound of Echo screaming. We're being attacked. What? What is happening? It isn't really that bad. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, birds! 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 Um, hello! Uh, Singular bird. Oh no, there's more birds. Nice. Um, That's a big bird. Rust instinctually goes for a sword rather than a gun. Alright, so. I need you all to roll initiative. Oh no. Okay, that's not bad, Shannon. Hey, 12's not bad for me either. Yeah, six. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh no. <laughs> what about those games? <laughs> you know what? It, it's fitting of the situation. Hey, those, that desert pecker is gonna. It's gonna have a little Hopefully outshoot. Hopefully, doesn't peck me again. It's unfortunate. Start the game immediately die before waking up. All right, so, Sienna, you're first. Okay, so, Sienna, looking at that, um, is, is that like, bleeding for, like, the eye now? It looks like it hit him more on the side of the head instead of the eye, but narrowly almost pecked his eye out. Oh, no. Okay, uh, she will take out her pistol. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, all right, uh, she'll, like, turn on her... On her stomach, aiming up. Ah, uh, Mr. Echo, just uh, stay still. As she would attempt to fire at it. Death Ooh. by teammates. <laughs> Twelve is just enough to hit the desert pecker. As it gives off a squeak for a second, and then just falls into a bloody heap next to Echo. Okay. Uh, use my half my movement to get up and then moving back 15 feet 
Okay, yeah, Mr. Noble! I think it's time to chop, chop, chop! Alright, Nobu. You get frozen awake. Okay. Uh, so, what can I do right now? Looking at the other desert parker, it's currently in mid-flight, around 30 feet up, looking to flying directly at Sienna. Alright. Okay. Let's see. Um... Would it be possible to... Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna shout at the at the desert pecker, and I'm gonna try to try to uh, goad it into into going for me instead. Do that at disadvantage. Would that be a persuasion? Or what? no, it'd be an intimidate to try to. Um, okay. Well, actually, animal handling might work. All right. Let's see. Uh, it. It's not any... normally a mechanic. The only disadvantage, uh, right? Only yes. class that actually technically has a thing is paladins, but we'll see what happens. Eleven. It seems to turn its head and look in your direction as it's starting to turn into your direction. Nobu's going to say, looks like we're going to make some chicken, huh? As the desert pecker flies down and makes two attacks with you on it with its beak and talon. Alright, uh, I don't have my armor on, so my AC would be 10. That'd be it. Would be it. Yeah. No. Stop. I guess I'm keep in mind, yeah. They take our arm off. <laughs> uh, yeah, both of us hit. This, this is gonna hurt. As you go unconscious. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Maybe. Wait, no, I'm not. I didn't roll yet. So the first one does five. Ouch. And 15, 15 damage. I am hurt, yeah. my dude. Wait, you're up? Yeah, I'm still up. As the pecker f flies in your direction, and you bring your arm up trying to block it, as it digs its talons into your arm as you cry out in pain, and then its beak comes down and stabs you right in your mouth and just grabbing onto your tongue. Jesus <gasps> Christ. He's going for all the soft bits. Rust. <laughs> all the soft bits. Um, she's kind of slightly unnerved by this, but still steps forward and Lion, grabbing her shield as she goes, and lines her sword up to go for a thrust because a slash probably <laughs> won't be good for Nobu if she misses. All right, let me go ahead and attack. Oh, no. um, I'm just gonna fluff that as she can't get a good, um, good angle to hit at it without risking. No did space. you make an attack roll? I did. I rolled nine. It didn't show up. Oh, there it is. Oh, there, there it is. Yeah. yeah, nine does not hit. As a bonus action, I like to use Tide to buy and to swat it with my shield. Yeah, go right ahead. Get it good. 15 definitely does hit. Swat it away from Nobu's head. Mm. <laughs> Uh, seeing, uh, the one next to me get shot off in a blood heap, and, uh, Nobu get savagely attacked, um, I gotta use half my movement to stand up, and then as part of my move, I'm going to pick up my shield for free, and then move 15 to here, and, uh, delay my action. Uh, to uh, telling Nobu to come here and I'll uh, patch him up. I'm going to yeah, use my medicine kit when, if he gets near me. Alright, Sienna. Okay. Um, Alright, so I forget exactly. So with guns, do I have to use my bonus action action to reload? I'm trying to remember. Depends on how many shots it has. And oh, you would right. have to use your action. 
Right, right, sorry. Um, okay. Uh, pistol, I'm pretty sure, has like six, right? <laughs> sorry. Firearms. Yeah, yeah, he firearms. Pistol, 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 pistol. Ah, uh, just... Hold on, sorry. Did not have this out, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, did you, did you, did you, did you, why did it take so long? Thank you. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it only has six shots. Pepper box, da da da. Cushing, hydro rifle. Yeah, yeah, okay. As I take another shot at this bird. Uh, okay, uh, so Nobu, just don't, uh, Try to clamp down on your tongue, I guess? Oh. Shit! <laughs> oh. <laughs> and with another staccato retort, Sienna fires her gun and absolutely eviscerates this poor thing. We found the dangerous one. Oh boy. as it drops to the ground, also, in a bloody heap. <laughs> oh. okay. As you guys have um, a moment... I'm gonna straight up and look out for any more, uh, scavengers. Yeah, go ahead, make a perception. Whee! As you look up, you see what can only be described as a torrent of sand f flying violently above you. There's no vision of the sky whatsoever, as if you're in some type of sandstorm, and this crevasse is the only thing giving you cover. Uh, I'd like to run over to Nobu and uh, do a medicine check to use the Determinator feet. Okay. Ouchies. Ouchies. That's all I can say. Okay, so, uh... Doo -doo -doo, let's see... Click the feet. Oh, is it going to do all the rolling and stuff already? No, but it allows people to read it. Okay. Six, two, four, plus four. So, heal you for seven. So, describe how you do this. Uh, checking out his body, seeing the peck wound and uh, the other wound. Um, uh, he takes out his uh, medicine kit and uh, applies ointment, um, gauze and whatnot to uh, stop the bleeding. Uh, just, just hold pressure right there. You'll be fine. Nobu just nods silently because his tongue's a little hurt. And uh, I would like to do the same to myself. Sienna is still shaking, holding the gun in her hand, <laughs> pointing at the bird. Uh, taking another piece of gauze and taping it over my eye for now. Uh, those are not nice birds. No, they are not. Hey, DM, how many. How much sleep? Well. It was an hour. Record. Okay. Wow. That was quick. Um. What's in my inventory? My. Uh, wait, would it be. Would it be okay if, uh, from the blood loss, uh, no, we just just feels tired and he just decides to go to sleep right then and there. <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, Nobu's a little pale right now. He had a brush with death and um, he's just going to after you you put gauze over his wounds, he's just going to do that. Is and there he's a gonna part... fall backwards. <laughs> Is there a part of this, um, this area that's, um, more covered by rocks than the rest? 
like with an overhang. As far as you were able to tell, <clears throat> it's not a full cover since it's a direct cut into the earth. But you could find some areas that's a little bit obscured, but it's not going to be any better or worse than what you already have. Alright. Because they could just fly on further away and just come in if they want. But as far as you're able to see, and as far as you can be concerned about, there doesn't seem to be any more coming. Uh, I, uh, okay. Oh, I think we definitely should have listened to those bird sounds earlier. Um, uh, well, there's four of us now. Um, you guys want to take watches? Um, sure, I guess. Again, still holding out the gun, shaking. Uh, put, put, um. put, Sienna, put it down. You, you did the most work. You're fine. Okay. You, you can go to sleep. We'll Alrighty. watch over it. Okay. I think. I'll take the first watch. I was and... actually going to suggest that I take the first watch. Oh, I, I did. I'd just like to uh, look at Nobu for a second, because it looks like he still has bad blood loss. If I show up. I'll Russ wake you up, Russ. Don't worry. To her... To her rock. Crosses her arms. And... Want to head forward. And France. Okay, Sienna slowly, gingerly puts the gun back in his holster. Goes back over to her bed and just rests her head down, <laughs> shaking a little. Like, oh my gosh, I just killed two birds! I just killed two birds! Uh, about 20 30 minutes after it seems like Sienna's gone to sleep, don't really care if Rust is awake because she's seen Echo use magic before. Um, Echo is going to uh, say a few words under his breath. And then uh, lightly put his uh, hand over uh, Nobu's body to cast uh, Cure Light Wounds. Oof. Hope you feel better. <laughs> he's... <laughs> he's now sleeping with a smile. And uh, I guess for the rest of the... Uh, I'm going to only take like a four hour shift. Um, because, you know, we have a couple people, uh, pace around, look around, uh, hopefully nothing happens. Do you put on your armor? Uh, I pick up my shield, um, and, uh, after I take care of Nobu, I would don my armor until it, it was time to wake up rest. Alright, go ahead and make a perception. <laughs> Alright. A nice little thing to keep and keep track of. <laughs> well, you're the one that made us uh, start it. Well, technically, no, that was Nobu <laughs> by getting hit. Reception of eight. Woo! So, looking about, you see above again just so much sand moving so fast that it's absolutely 100% like encompassing to the point that you can't even really see anything coming or going beyond the rocks that seem to be giving you guys protection here you get the idea that if you didn't find your way in here also put your per where you are on the map on the map yeah oh well i was uh taking care of him but uh if i have to go over get my armor start putting it on i'd be there all right so, you get the idea, obviously, if you guys didn't find this place, that you'd be in trouble. You can't even really discern if it's day or night anymore with how thick the sand is moving above you. Though, as far as that goes, you don't notice anything coming. Any desert peckers, any people, you just hear the crackle of your dying fire, and the... Depends on if they snore. 
Sound of your ally snoring. Uh, I'm guessing the rest of my shift goes fine. For what it seems like. Uh, I would, uh, after I feel it's been about long enough, I would uh, approach Rust, uh, tap her on the shoulder as I toss a few branches in the fire. Um, Russ gets up, looks over at the fire, and looks somewhere over here. Make sure everyone else is asleep, and watches Echo get himself ready to go to sleep. I start uh, doffing my armor, and I point over towards uh, a stack of uh, sticks I made, so uh, she can keep the fire going. Towards it and nod back at him. Bedtime. Alright. Go ahead and make a perception. Rust. So, with that perception, just above on the, like, blith, you see what looks like a nest. Round up here. Don't tell me that those are the fucking parents. Oh no. <laughs> oh, How no. far off is the, is the nest? About 20 feet up the wall. There's, like, there's um, some handholds and such. This is a very um, segmented rock, so yes. Rust would like to uh, climb and see what's up there. Alright, you move to the wall, give it a look, give it a nod, thinking that you're able to do it, and go ahead and make me an athletics. Yay. Ah. As we add to the table. <laughs> nope, you get about. 15 feet up as you reach just near the top to be eye level with this thing. And whatever you're using for your leg gives out. As you try to reach and grab and hopefully, like, get hold of something. But the rock you're holding rips out of the wall as you fall backwards. As you fall and take four damage. And those that are light sleepers are awakened by the sound of metal hitting rock. So what would count cost you as a light sleeper? If you choose. Okay. You light sleepers will also hear swearing in a language no one else here understands. <clears throat> Russ, what happened? Yes, Yana, yes, Yana, like shoots up. What happened? What is happening? I should just reset for a holster. Shut up and go back to bed. Everything good? Little bit of rock. Don't worry, that pretty head. Ah, you still gotta teach me that language later. I roll over to go back to bed. Uh, Sienna looks over at the rest. Okay. Puts the gun back on her holster. She's correcting her hat and stuff, which probably got dislodged by the fall. Want to keep track of that. Um. Yep. As you look back up, you don't see any movement coming from the nest, though you see the failed area that you were trying to climb and seem to mess up some of the handholds that you're going over there. And creating new ones. Well, you can give it another shot if you'd like. She doesn't think that's a good idea for the rest of the night. So, accepting so that defeat. eye on the nest, just in case another... 
bird pops out, but she uh, she's gonna take that loss. So accepting that defeat, Rust, you move back to looking around the area as time passes. And we're going to take this time to take a break. So, thank you guys for watching. We're going to be back here in about 10 to 15 minutes for the continuation of They Were Heroes, a D&D 5e game. So, we'll see you guys back within that time. Peace. Yeah, I'm going to use my... Uh...